There are three phases to my review. The first part is my overall reaction. Second part, what I liked, what I didn't like. Third, conclusion, summary, thoughts moving forward. And before you say I'm thinking too deep about this, like, you, you still don't understand what this was culturally for a lot of women. People were crying, laughing, clapping. The reaction was insane. I've never seen anything like this. I can only compare it to the Harry Potter phenomenon. I mean, and even before this movie came out, like we knew it was gonna be a big deal. There has never been marketing like there has been for this movie. Editing Nicole here. I wanna add, it was a part of the strategy to have this larger than life marketing, but the success of actually being able to do that, I think is due to two major things that are a reflection of the fact that this was a cultural moment. One, I think a lot of companies are able to relate and see themselves in Barbie. Remember, companies are also brands. They also have an image and a personality. So not all trends are actually something they can resonate with or make sense for them. The second thing is just the sheer demand of Barbie. Because trends are about group identity experiences and so many people feel like they could see something that they have been missing in Barbie, there's a real demand for the consumption of her or the desire to embody her in your makeup, in your clothes, in all different facets. And I know a big critique of Barbie is a consumption kind of culture. But when we think about consumption, we need to remember that again, this is through a demand or a need, a desire people have. So I think a deeper question, instead of to criticize people who resonate with this, is to ask why this is so important for them. Why do they feel like they have been missing this embodiment in so many different facets? which they can consume. Anyways, let's get into what I liked and what I didn't like about this film. What I loved about this movie, one, it met the moment. And what I mean by that is it really was a true cultural reflection of things we are negotiating in society. I've talked about this in my YouTube videos, but overall in culture, there is this embrace of presentation again. I think 1970s dress for success, except today it's clean girl. And within clean girl, I think there is a major negotiation happening in culture about the degree of femininity and what that looks like. Is it okay? Is it acceptable? Go watch my other videos if you want to understand that more. But in general, it's definitely meeting the moment on some important topics being discussed in culture. Two, it explained the feminine and the female struggle really well in the film. I mean, there were moments during certain monologues, people were clapping, the whole movie theater clapping for just the lines written. It was crazy it was crazy even there were guys like in certain monologue moments they were going mm. like it was a true emotional reaction happening everybody in the movie was on some sort of journey together it was insane so that that's definitely a plus oh and the specific monologue i'm talking about if you want to reference it you'll know when you're in the movie theater but it's when she's talking about womanhood this woman shook everyone was like whoa the third thing I really liked about it is it also explained the Barbie archetype very well in society. The pros and cons of a Barbie, you know? And when you think about Barbie, think about who is she? Who is she in our society? You know, she's the ambitious one. She's the very feminine one, positive, motivated. Who can you think of in our society who reflects that? And how do we treat her? What do we get from her? So there was a deep consideration of who Barbie is and explaining that. I really enjoyed that. And I also noticed the people at the end of the film who were literally crying tend to be a certain type of woman feeling seen, you know? So yeah, there was like a type of woman who was crying at this film. It was crazy. Even I heard somebody say this was so worth it coming again. So not only did they go to the midnight premiere, but they also went the next day. Like, okay. And then something I didn't like, there is this monologue where the same woman who gave the monologue everybody loved gave this other monologue about how she wishes there were a there was a barbie that was average like an app just she used the term this is how she worded it because it really stuck out to me um why it was like something why can't there be a barbie that's just an average mom doesn't do anything special she's just an average mom it's one thing to talk about why can't there be a mediocre barbie <laughs> But it's another thing to assume that moms are all mediocre. And I don't think that is very a very respectful way to think about women who sacrifice and dedicate their life and choose other people, you know, their kids and their communities. And I didn't like the writing of that. And that being said, perhaps it is in the vision of the writers to have had that line because it did come from a woman who is a real woman in the human world. So from an artistic point of view, I can't critique it because I'm not the actual person who wrote it. So maybe they meant it to be like that, but it was definitely not a moment of empowerment. That's for sure. 
but maybe it was just a moment of reality. I, I really don't know about that line. To me though, the way it was written, it didn't come off like they were trying to be empowering towards mothers or view them just as well as career women. So that is why I have it in my dislike. But if a, a writer wants to explain what they meant by that and it's a deeper artistic vision, maybe we'll see it in Barbie too, then okay, fine. But yeah, didn't think it was helpful for women. This is a dislike spoiler alert. I also, upon reflecting, did not like, and again, it probably could be argued again from the director, writer's point of view, but I didn't like how in the end, Barbie goes to the gynecologist and she isn't her ultra femme self anymore. And I think that's important because, you know, from a cultural point of view, a huge reason Barbie was so embraced is because a lot of women feel like they could express their super feminine side. Barbie almost gave them permission because she's also somebody society views as successful on paper right? She has a, um, a lot of ambition, she's positive, all the things that we know about Barbie. So her not being able to still be that in the real world was a bit discouraging for, I mean, all of the people who embodied Barbie and loved this trend and really related to it. It just makes you ask, so is it not possible to be ultra femme in today's society? So you could see how this could be a conscious play on the director's part to lead into Barbie 2 and how she negotiates that with herself. But it did kind of leave the Barbies like, wah, 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 you know, like, so yeah, I, I disliked it just because of its effect on the women who watched it, I think but I can understand from a director's point of view why that would be the segue into Barbie 2. Just personally, I don't think it was necessary that she went to the gynecologist without still being Barbie. And of course, fashion is about identity. So to me, when I saw her dressed down, it was like, oh, she really doesn't know who she is here. Because it's not like Barbie ever hated who she was. She just was confused, what is her purpose? So is it possible to have a purpose and be in the real world and still be ultra femme? That is not really answered. Part three, what I'm still considering and kind of working through. Okay, the way they depicted Ken, um, I'm just still thinking about that. I'm still thinking about if that was like the, the higher purpose for that and maybe that will be explained in further sequels, Ken's deal. But overall, like if I just had to take this movie as a work of art, well, it is called Barbie, but this whole thing is about a larger conversation of the male and the female and our relationship with each other, as well as femininity and masculinity. So it is about Barbie or the woman experience, but part of the woman experience is also understanding the male experience deeper. And I don't think we went there with Ken. And if there was moments, I guess I didn't pick it up on it very well from my initial viewing. Um, perhaps he does say some things that are like deeper, but it just wasn't, okay, spoiler right here. He doesn't go with her to the, the real world in the end. She's going to the gynecologist alone. And I don't know about you, but my Ken goes with me to the gynecologist. You get what I'm saying here? As much as we need a female moment, and this is what this was, the feminine moment, we will need to address the masculine and be in sync with each other. If we're always talking about the struggle of one, then it can easily become imbalanced again. So to have a better whole understanding of the major themes of this film, it will be richer if we understand Ken more. I went really deep with this Barbie movie. I mean, in summary, this was a really deep film, very symbolic. You're gonna enjoy it from a visual point of view, from a writing point of view. There'll be moments you agree with, moments that you don't, moments that make you feel certain kinds of ways. It's like, it was big. And let me just say when the film was over, what an energy, like what a unification of women. One very positive thing. Probably the most positive thing of this film is that I think it really unified women. So I think a big question looking at Barbie 2 is, do we still need to unpack the female-female relationship and understand Barbie, or are we ready to move on to unpacking Ken and the male experience? Because the male-female experience can only exist through each other. And I think from a society point of view, you know, let me ask, do we discourage the Barbie archetype? Do we listen to her? Do we reduce her? 
Do we put her in a mental box? How do we treat the Barbie girls? And when we think of real world examples of the Barbie archetypes, you know, let's ask these figures, honestly, like how do we treat Kim? How did we treat Selena and Haley? How do we treat every girl who loved this trend? Are we still unpacking that in Barbie 2 or has there been a sisterly embrace? Can we move on and are we ready to address Ken and the masculine? Very interesting questions posed.